All right, it's time to draw this uh, compar comparison and kind of um, what turned into a long-term trial with this pat this model of case knife, and then that turned into comparing the uh, chrome vanadium steel versus the uh, stainless steel. So the long and the short of it is because it, I'm sure you've already seen the cut test. Um, if not, watch the cut test. If not that, definitely watch the summary video. You can see for yourself how the knives performed after 300 cuts through um, just standard card packaging cardboard that you would receive any of your um, gear in the mail in. So what I did in this video is the opposite. I took the knives that had been dulled, they no longer would reliably cut the phone book paper and I put them on the strop to see how long it would take to strop them up. Well, you can see here the chrome vanadium, it took each one of these tick marks is 10 strokes. So it took 40 strokes on black, 40 strokes on white, 40 strokes on green to bring it back to something that was kind of close to what it was when it came off of the wicked edge. The uh, stainless steel, it took 30 um, or actually 40 blacks, 40 straps on the black and that's on each side by the way. So 40 straps on each side of the blade on black and 20 straps on white. And that brought it back to pretty, I, I mean, if you would have told me it just came off the wicked edge, I wouldn't doubt you. That's how, how close it was to me, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> now, as far as the knives are concerned, um, well, I tell you what, I tell you what, let me, let me, let me tell you about the knives and then I'll give you some more detailed information about how it responded to the strap. And if you just want to get to the point, I know a lot of people just want to know just purely the information. So what I will tell you after carrying both of these knives for, um, I don't know, maybe three weeks or so, they are reliable, they're comfortable. Um, I didn't get, after 600 cuts, I did 300 cuts last night with this knife and 300 cuts last night with this knife. They, I didn't get any hot spots, um, no issues. It, it, it worked very nicely. That kind of downward angle of the blade worked very well for slicing. <clears throat> um, maybe, maybe the knife is a little bit thick, but it still cuts very well. The fact that it locks is reassuring if you're going to use it for something a little more heavy duty. This can kind of bridge that gap between a modern knife and a uh, traditional knife. <clears throat> the stainless steel held up very well. You can see, um, well, I don't know if the light today is going to show it very well. But there are some scratches here on the on the blade from the cardboard, and I don't think that's going to come out very well. But trust me, there are. Uh, this knife, when I got it, it was a little bit tight to disengage. Now it's very easy to disengage, and the actual action itself was a little bit notchy and catchy. It kind of, you know, kind of almost felt like that when you were opening and opening and closing it. Now it opens smoothly. To about right here and there's kind of a flat spot on the tang and then it pops into the lock uh, it's easily disengaged it's it's flat here the uh, where the lock engages the tang it's flat it's flat back here where the um, the lock back terminates to the rest of the uh, it's not really a back spring but whatever you want to call this back here this is is flush um, Really just, like I said, just an overall, just a, a good knife, joy to use. I don't really have any issues or concerns. There's no side to side play. There's slight up and down. Again, if you know anything about traditional lockbacks or back locks, there is gonna be some up and down play. And that's due to the fact that this, this locking mechanism has to go up and down. If it was so tight that there was no play, it would be too hard to disengage this um, locking mechanism. So. That's the stainless steel version. <clears throat> now, this is a um, sprint, or not sprint, an exclusive run for uh, Shepherd Hills Cutlery, I believe is the name of the company. And this knife, when I, when I got it, it was pretty tight. The spring, there was um, noticeably more tension and it was noticeably harder to disengage the lock. Um, also, when the lock was engaged, it was proud 
it was proud of the scale here. And I think you can kind of see it's still a little bit proud of the scale right right here. So, um, you know, that take that for what it is. Uh, back here, I think you might be able to see this as well. It's recessed. If you look where the the actual lock that you, lock that you depress meets up with this the continuation of um, the mock spring here, you can see that there's it's recessed. So the fit and finish I found on this one wasn't as good. There was there I don't know. It felt like there was some slight side to side play when I got the knife. Now there doesn't feel there to be any side to side play. There feels to be even less. Um, up and down than with the stainless steel knife over here. But again, like I said, this knife is noticeably harder to disengage that lock. So it locks up a lot, a lot tighter. Um, therefore, there's less play. Um, I did notice one thing I did notice uh, is the blade here. And I hope I can show it. You can see it there within 24 hours, the blade itself had already started to discolor. So <clears throat> that was a little bit unusual for me. I think there's also some back here that you can see. That's that's actual discoloration, that's not a streak. Um, that's actual discoloration, that's not a streak. So th this discoloration was unusual to me because I have lots of 1095 blades from uh, GEC and other companies, um, SE, so on and so forth. And I've never had a knife start to turn colors quite so quickly. So that kind of surprised me um, a little bit. But overall, again, I can't knock the knife. The uh, centering on both. Well, this one, this one, this one came with good centering and it's maintained good centering. It also does not I can't push this back and forth. Well, now I can, but when I first got it, I couldn't push it back and forth and kind of adjust the centering. On this knife from day one, the centering was off when I first got it, and I could easily press the blade to the side and it'll stay. So that was something that I noticed. However, nine times out of 10, the centering is right in the middle, but it does um move with the the blade closed but it doesn't move when the blade is open so those are the the major differences some of the other things that you'll notice is and i hope it'll pick this up on camera as i use these knives you can see that these bolsters tarnished and you can see that that pin there holding these um end caps on I don't, yeah, you can see this one here probably a little bit better. You can see it right there. So they are starting to tarnish a little bit. Um, they're nickel silver. So all you'd have to do is put a little um, rubbing compound on a rag and it'll buff right out. But if if I had to give an overall judgment on chrome vanadium steel versus the stainless steel, um, this is surprising to me, but the stainless steel, I would have to say, is the, the winner. I feel like it held an edge better, and I think that the uh, results will show that. Uh, if you look back at the cut test, please you know, comment on that video. Um, let me know what you, what you think, what you see in the video. But as I progress through the test, this cut clean, more cleanly um, for a longer amount of time. This also, if you look at the stropping information required much less stropping to get back to sharp. And I will show you guys that um, here now, which I guess I should have done at the beginning if you wanted the, the short version of it. So this is the uh, chrome vanadium steel. And you can see it cuts, it cuts well, but you can hear, you can probably hear it. It's not, it's not a razor, just, you know, razor like it was when it came off of the Wicked Edge. It's, it's plenty sharp. If you handed this to somebody, this would probably be sharper than most knives that, that most regular guys carry. So it is sharp, don't, give me the, don't um, take me the wrong way. This knife, on the other hand, I think you'll see when it came off with less dropping, I only went up to the white compound on this, 
and there were only a total of 60 uh, passes on the strap on either side. This knife, well, that was a bad pass, but this knife is just, it's just razor sharp. I mean, it just rips through this paper. It doesn't matter how you hold the paper. It doesn't matter where you cut it. This is just, this is just sharp, 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 sharp. So um, the stainless steel held an edge in my test longer and it uh, returned to a sharper edge more quickly than the chrome vanadium steel. So there you have it. Um, I enjoyed the process. If you have any questions or comments or input or things that you think I could have done differently, please list them below. I look forward to hearing, to hearing what you have to say. One note that I forgot to add in, um, just for anybody that is uh, intrigued, these knives were both sharpened on the Wicked Edge sharpener um, up to 600 grit, and that didn't work out if you saw my failure video, so then they were stropped to a semi-mirror polished edge, and I'm trying to get it focused here. Um, 17 degrees on either side, so total, total um, angle of 34 degrees, and that's the same for both of these knives. So both of them were sharpened on the Wicked Edge, 17 degrees per side, up to a 600 grit finish. And then, like I said, because of the edge problems I had during the first test that failed, I ended up stropping them to a semi-mirror finish. So just a side note. Thank you.